There's power going into this, power going into that, power going into this. Yeah, it works. We got power. So we got power. We got power. Sean and Ash here, building a bus to live in full time. And we're gonna show you how we did our electrical system. Can it be? What? What? Okay. Yeah. What's up, babe? Positive, negative. I'm gonna drill holes in these because. They're too uh, small for our application. Nice, so everything gets put on here like a giant circuit board. Exactly. Ha ha! I'm an electrician. Ha ha! They call this a hammer crimper. I don't know why, but that's what they call it. Um, rented this from AutoZone. There's our crimp. Looks good, right? So I started it like this. Your dad gave me this idea. Um, put it. I put it in the vise, oh. and that's a good way to start it. But like when you hammer it, it just gets way deeper of a crimp. Oh, this is a hammer crimp. This is a vise crimp. Looks like just plastic. We're gonna figure out where everything fits with all the wire sizes, and then just mount this to the garage wall. Nice, good idea. In the bus. Watch this. You're gonna look at how much insulation you have to take off. So we'll say about right there. Score the insulation. And you shoot it at the car. You got yourself a nice wire strip. And then that fits on there. See, I could have even left a little more insulation, but we're gonna take that so it'll be fine. And then you just crimp it. Little wire powers our shunt. We're gonna see how everything fits. Let's go. What? I got a couple of things to say. That looks so I love cool. you. And yeah, got a couple of things to say. This wire is this awkward length. It's because these two wires need to be the exact same size in oh. order for the batteries to charge at the same rate. Our switch for our solar didn't come in yet. So if I was to switch this off, this would have a lot of power going through it and it's not going anywhere. Yeah. So that's not good. Perfect cut. What did you expect? Do you have the Henway inside over there? What? Yeah, but what is a Henway? I don't know what that is. Two or three pounds. It's about two or three pounds. <laughs> 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 If I start doing this, I'm not kidding. Just need a flux capacitor in there. You guys will be able to travel through time. Wow. I know it's pretty anticlimactic, but I think there's power going through this. <sighs> okay. There's power going into this. Power going into that. Power going into this. Yeah, it works. You got power. So we got power. We got power. Where's my multimeter? Ah! Where's my multimeter? My eyeballs kind of hurt because I have suntan lotion on my face and I rub my eyes and I have suntan lotion in my eyes. So I'm gonna try to do this without crying. Okay, so I am going to do 
a walkthrough. Everything. And try to explain, you know, the best I can. It's really not that complicated. Hot line comes from our solar panel through the side of our charge controller. Uh, PV positive, negative obviously goes into the PV negative. Out comes the battery positive and the battery negative. This is grounded to our ground line or ground bar through the fuse or breaker to a bus bar. So it needs to be collection of power here. It goes through this to our positive feed to the battery. Gotta go through a fuse because the power is coming back out into our lines. These connections have to go positive, positive, negative, negative if you're just gonna do it in parallel like we did through the bus bar. This switch, this turns on our power. So right now there's power in our 12 volt. No, there's not. I recommend you, when you're working on it, turn it off because I was messing with the inverter. We kept getting shocked and it was like kind of scary. Through the positive bus bar, up through a breaker to our 12 volt system, which is also grounded. Inverter, 350 amp fuse if you're doing a 3000 watt inverter. Positive lead into the positive terminal. This is our negative lead from the inverter. I didn't have any more black wire, so I just put electrical tape on it. And that leads all the way to our negative bus bar. So here's our ground wire from our charge controller. Again, I'm letting you guys know. Negative from the charge controller. The chassis ground, which is all the way around through the floor to the chassis. Getting ready to put our ground wire in. This is our negative from the inverter, obviously. And then this is our ground for the inverter. So everything gets grounded as well as the negative and positive. And then I'll get into the breaker panel a little bit. Pretty much just went through the whole system. It's it's very simple. If you understand, you know, the steps, you can figure this out, no problem. We have this guy cutting the lawn. I hope you guys can hear me. I'm gonna have four breakers on there. One for the right side of the bus, one for the left side of the bus, one for the fridge. And then I'm gonna have one for the AC unit that I'll be able to turn on and off from this breaker. Yeah, so as far as wire sizes, we have four aught gauge and four gauge throughout the whole system. The only difference is the 10 gauge that comes from the solar panels and the six gauge, six two wire comes from the inverter that goes into our breaker box. Length of run doesn't really come into play here because these aren't long runs at all. The longest we have here is probably maybe three feet. So didn't have to worry too much about that. I chose to do breakers because if I wanted to shut the power from our 12 volt, all I have to do is click that and it's disconnected. And then we're back. If this blows, all that happens is this flips up. If I had a fuse there, kind of like this a &L fuse, it would break and then I'd have to reinstall a new fuse. Obviously these are more expensive, 25 bucks. This is like seven bucks for a pack of two. Just get the, the breakers. Off the battery, we have a 300 amp fuse. This thing gave me some trouble. I don't know if I installed it incorrectly. We weren't getting power through this wire and our charge controller wasn't turning on. There's like a washer on both ends and we needed it to make contact with this, I guess, um, holder that they have here. So I had to install that lock washer at the bottom, which brought it all together. If there's a better way to do that, please let me know. 100 amp fuse that goes to our 12 volt. This is rated for 100 amps. This is a 350 amp fuse going to our inverter. The Samlex is a bad boy. Should be able to, you know, run an AC off of this. This is going to be where our shoreline feeds into. It's gonna run from here out to the side of the bus there. We're gonna drill a hole. This is where our breaker box comes from. This turns the DC power from the panels into AC power, as well as charges our batteries. And modified sine wave is like <laughs> It's like jagged, where pure sine wave is a nice consistent current. It was expensive. The pure sine wave are obviously expensive. This thing was, I don't even wanna tell you, it was like 1200 bucks. For output lines, I have the ground, the neutral, and the hot. And there's the generator lines, neutral, ground, hot. And then there's the grid lines, which is your shore power. Bus bar is essentially just a collection of all the connections. Collection of connections. We'll have one coming off here for our alternator connection. So we'll use this last terminal here. And they're rated for, I think about 600 amps. This is getting 
a little crowded. This I had to buy later on. There's a way to do this where you just buy one metal copper bar. These work better when they're kept, you know, relatively cool. I mean, your battery will have its own settings and specifications. Hot Florida sun, we're pulling in about 20, 20 amps right now. We definitely are going to insulate this door because it gets super hot. You know, all we have to do now, we have power coming through. Let's connect our 12 volt and our 110 and we're all set. Um, I hope I did a thorough run through here. If there's anything you guys need to know, please just comment. We're not professionals. If you want to do this right, I suggest having someone there with you. Full scale view of it because that's how I learn. You know, if I, if I can just see all the connections happening. We had a lot of help from other bus conversion channels. And Kels and Jay is a shout out. The guy from Explorist's Life he has a website that we'll tag at the bottom that helped us a lot. You know, this stuff, it seems crazy complicated. I mean, there was a, a time where I was feeling a little overwhelmed and I was like, oh man, I should just hire someone to do this for me so much quicker. But I'm really glad that I was able to do the research and figure this out because now if something goes wrong, I can fix it myself and it feels good. You know, I was able to do this. You can do this, you can do anything, I suppose.